All right, morning YouTube. Happy Friday. Looks like uh, it's going to be a rainy one here in Florida. And this is Spec Operator 4. Now I've been getting some uh, questions, actually quite a few, on what my top favorite, my five top favorite folders would be. And, <laughs> um, yeah, so, <laughs> you know, I, I always thought about it and I said to myself, you know, if I was ever asked that, I would definitely know and, you know, and whatever, but uh, it's a it, very hard question, okay? Um, what are you talking? Are you talking the high-end folders, value folders, big folders, small folders, Spyderco, ZT? I mean, there are so many different um, categories when you're talking about what your favorites may be. Um, I think they're, they're meaning what, you know, right now what my top five favorite folders are. And this is going to be, you know, one of these things where obviously... Oh, well, Chris Reeve and, and, and Strider and, you know, because they're the top four or top three, you know, and they cost so much money, they're my favorite. No, it's because they're so well made and put together with incredibly high tolerances, beautiful, um, you know, good customer service mainly. And yeah, so, you know, the top uh, four high production High-end production knives, I believe now, are Hinderer, of course, Chris Reeve, Strider, and what I believe, I guess it used to be Emerson, some people say, or, you know, uh, a couple other guys, but I believe Jason Browse has, uh, has, you know, joined the uh, family, all right? I believe his, you know, the last few years he's been, you know, putting out some incredibly made, you know, well-made knives, and... He definitely deserves, I think, to be in the top four American-made high-end folders. Um, production, let's say production, okay? So, as you guys know, I've gotten my VR71. I have another couple browse blades, but this is more of a high-end, okay? These are all going to be between four and $550. And yes, these are my top five, all right? Now... I have a few Spydercos and a few ZTs that obviously come very close and are, you know, are you asking my EDC or just in general? And this is, I'm saying in general, right now, my five favorite folders, it could change 10 minutes after I finish this video. All right, I have so many knives and haven't had a chance to really, you know, take the time to get to know them all, <laughs> I guess you could say. So when I am taking the time, I'm falling in, in love with one knife after another, okay? So, you know, maybe it was my Sabenzas and my Umnumzons, okay? I got my Sabenza, and then I got my Umnumzon, and I fell in love with the Umnumzon. Then I got, you know, the Strider. I fell in love with that, and then the Hinderer, and then the Browse. So, uh, anyway, so I've had my Hinderer and my Strider now for a few weeks, and absolutely loving them, absolutely loving my VR71. All right, here's our my Skinner. Now, I, I know you guys here, I absolutely love, incredible knife. I mean, I probably say that a thousand times a video, but <laughs> that's just how I feel. I love all my knives. I really do. Okay, really do love them all. Okay, now, let's see. In order of my favorites as of right now, okay? Today, Friday, the 5th of June. All right, let's put all of these away here. And we are going to go with my favorite folder as of right now. Production folder is going to be my Chris Reeve StarTac Omnumzon. All right, my first Omnumzon, I loved it. Um, incredible knife, just wicked blade shape. Yet you got the style and the class of Chris Reeve knives, and obviously the tolerances and the, the materials used, and all the awards. And I mean, he doesn't get these awards for just no reason. They don't just say, "Oh well, it's 2015. Here you go. It's 2016. Here you go." No. I mean, you, you have any idea how many knife makers there are out there right now, especially right now, making knives, making great knives, and out of all of them, he's the one that's you know winning these. Uh, you know, all these awards for his great products. 
All right, so this is my StarTac. This is the Wilson Combat, as you guys know. Um, I just love that sunburst, whatever kind of pattern. I love this knife. It's taken me a little while to work in here. Had an incredible amount of grease on it uh, from the factory. So it's incredible. Yes, the sun is still shining and I'm flicking a Chris Reeve knife, guys. All right, so just chill. Here we go. All right, let's see. Uh, second favorite would have to be right now. <sighs> okay, right now, today would be my Endurer. And it seems like I woke up today and started flipping this and all of a sudden it was just the absolute perfect detent. I wanted a strong detent, it was a little too strong for me and now it is just, uh, I can actually deploy it with the thumb studs. Awesome knife. All right, that would be number two for me. And like I said, I mean, at any given time, they can all switch. So uh, number three would be, I guess it would be my, my Sabenza. Um, although, and I know it sounds weird, if it was a plain Jane Sabenza, it would probably go as number three. All right, because this is just a collector's piece for me. I don't think I'll ever carry this. All right, so that actually brings down um, the enjoyment for me. All right, this is one of those knives where, you know, I don't want to flip it too much. I don't, you know, don't want it to break in too much. I know I sound silly when I say that, but that's just something that I love to look at. It is just beautiful. All right, so let's say a Sabenza 21 large would be my third. Okay. And, I mean, this is, this is a, a very tough one, okay. Now I love my Strider, I, I really have fell, fallen in love with it, um, although you know, it's one of those things right now, um, it's not completely broken in yet, and also, you know, when it locks up and then I go to grab it, I feel the lock bar go over just a little bit more, and I don't like that. Okay, but a uh, really nice knife, too much of it sticks out for me, but you could get aftermarket pocket clips. Okay, so that's going to go down there. I think. I think uh, my Browse BR-71 has definitely, I mean, I, I may even put it there. I know, I know, I know. All right, I love this knife. And the fact that I know that I can play with it and just flip it and, you know, it's got two uh, deployment methods, um, you know, six ounces, carbon fiber is absolutely gorgeous on it. I've tried to show you guys before. Um, just really, really pretty. Look at that. Alright, I stepped up from my micro stream. Um, my stream like micro stream that I was doing this. You know, I'm outside, but I'm under a canopy here, so I don't have direct sunlight. So I always whip out my little micro stream and try and show you guys. Uh, I took it, my Orion 500 lumen flashlight off of my one of my ARs. <laughs> Alright, this is an awesome light, guys. Okay, very, very, very bright. Okay, it's got the, you know, strobe and dim and, all right. So anyway, enough about my flashlight. But I just think that you can really get the uh, appreciation of this knife. And you can really see how beautiful it is. All right. So I think that's going there, obviously. I mean... That is just a thing of beauty. Like I've mentioned before, that titanium just, uh, you know, just sparkles. Ugh. Anyway. Beautiful knife. Beautiful knife. All right. And obviously you guys know that I love the stonewash finish on this. It is absolutely just a uh, beautiful, beautiful stonewash on the hinderer. So anyway, let's get back to it. All right, so number three, I would have to say number four, number five. Although number five, I think uh, when I break it in more, it's going to become more of a, a favorite for me. I don't know. You know, I think this is on what? 
false or bronze washers. Um, just I think in, material wise out of all of these is using the lowest end materials. This being the 154 CM. So yes, out of all of these knives. Okay. This is the 64 ALV or titanium um, S35 VN. It's the D2 carbon fiber. This is titanium. Well, G. G10, but titanium, S35 VN, S35 VN, titanium. All right. So if this wasn't here, this would be. Yep. You guys called it. It's my 0630. Whew. Look at that, boys. I've shown this to you on my, uh, my channel before. But that right there is just a thing of beauty. Look at that blade. Just gorgeous. Love this knife. Love this blade shape. This upswept blade shape is just gorgeous. Um, you know, it's kind of, look at that Skinner blade, right? So you see how it's got that upswept there. And Actually, I've never even noticed this before. If this, if the Hinderer blade was to go here, this would be almost a very, very similar blade shape. Am I, am I being silly here? Because if you see, this goes up and down. This goes up and down. The only difference, and then of course you got the flats here going out, flats here going out. This just extends from here to here a little more. But that blade shape is very similar. I don't know if... The way I'm looking at it right now, it is. Anyway, maybe a reason why I love these knives here. So that's your ZTO 630. Um, excellent knife. Excellent knife. Although, got a little spoiler alert for you guys. Um, you know my love for ZTs, okay? I hadn't realized this before. I'd never found any flaws on any ZT models I've had. I'll say that right now, and you guys know how many ZT models I have, right? So, not one flaw ever. Now, I had two of these. You guys know that. I had a backup, a duplicate. I traded it as part of my trade for the hinderer here. So the other one I had was the one that I would, you know, keep in my case, um, take out every now and then, look at, maybe flip a few times. And this one was in the box because it's 195. That's the serial number, 195. So I kept this one. Can you guys see something on that um, blade tang there? As it's hitting the lock face. Yep. It's actually not, um, you guys can see it here too. Look at the right side. Look on the right side of the tang of the blade. There's actually, uh, look, it's cut out. Can you guys see that? I'm asking you like you can answer me. That is too funny. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the tang of the blade here at the bottom where it's hitting the lock bar is all uh, jag it up okay on this side it's it's kind of weird it's not um, doing anything to the performance of the knife it just is you know a little machining or something uh, cut away too much of the tang there anyway all right so rambling this was just a ramble this was my five t favorite uh, folders production folders all right now this could be thrown in the mix at any time even though I don't carry it because of I don't know. I've had three sages before. I think it's just, I don't know. I love this knife. I do. I love it. Um, I just, I don't know why I think this is going to, you know, become one of these collector's pieces. Um, I'm going to stop making it, discontinuing it, and then, and then it's just going to skyrocket. You know, I mean, it's just an incredible knife. Everybody knows that. The fit and finish, uh, you know, it's, I think so close to a, a Sabenza. What is it, $150? Anyway. Alright, this could be thrown in the mix right now too. My Odino. I'm loving this. It's a little heavy. The carbon fiber, I believe, was like an ounce lighter. I think this is like 5.5. Five. You know, for a 3 inch blade, it's kind of heavy. But I don't mind. A little uh, heftiness. Not a small guy, so. Alright, or, I know people are going to cringe. My Kaiser Kalijin. 
401 DT1. I love this knife. Running on barons, just smooth as ever. Thumb stud deployment. Now I had mentioned uh, in my review that this flipper here was going to hit this and I didn't like it, it was too big. They've actually made it. It's where your thumb stud is, all right? It's creating it so your hand actually has to come up and it doesn't hit it whatsoever. It looks like it's going to, but watch. So exactly if the thumb stud was a millimeter or two up here or a millimeter or two back here, you know, that's going to hit right here or that's going to hit right here. But where they've put it, it's right in the indentation of my, look, doesn't hit, doesn't rub whatsoever. I actually don't have to loosen up my hand to do that. It just flips out perfectly. doesn't hit my hand. It comes from here in. Anyway, loving it, loving it. All right, you could say my uh, Spyderco, Gail Bradley, love that knife. Definitely a top favorite. Um, PM2, of course. But right now, today, my top five favorite folders. I'm sure anybody would say, you know, Hinderer, Reeves, whatever. But people have been asking. So, I could do a top five Spyderco, top five ZT, you know, top five under $300. Maybe I'll do that next. Um, but loving my knives so far, guys. Um, this is really... This is really excellent lockup now. Hasn't moved whatsoever since I got it, and I flip my knives around a lot. All right, my strider has moved over a little bit. I, I would definitely notice it now. Um, this doesn't move over at all, stainless steel. So I can play with this, flip this, you know, and that's part of it for me. It's not just about how it cuts. It's about, and I know this is going to sound silly, right? It's about how it flips how it how you how it plays you know how you can play with it how how much fun is it to play with um i'll be honest with you and say i don't really like playing with my sabenza all right well a little thumb stud it's cool i can flip it you know flip it back flip it this way okay that's cool oh uh, if it had a double thumb lug yes because then i could flip it with my uh my finger there and i would like that you know because i can do the spidey flick with the thumb stud here okay and it's just fun to play with, you know, I'm sitting on the couch, I'm watching TV, I'm, I'm doing work at my desk, um, driving my car, pretty much anything I do, sitting on the toilet, I'm flipping my knives. So I want to make sure they're fun to, to play with, you know. Spydercos, love them, love them, dude, you know, got that spidey hole. Real fun to play with, alright. My hinderer, fun to play with, thumb stud deployment, flipper deployment. Okay, the umnum's on. Real cool, just because, you know, it's got that kind of different way to open. Um, you know, and it's got the double thumb lugs. I can't flip it this way yet. It's not uh, that smooth yet. All right, you got your double uh, deployment method here, flipper. And, of course, your kind of hole here, spidey hole, whatever, you know. So, anyway, you know, how much fun are they to play with? sit around and play with you know this is fun to play with I can flip that my middle finger I can you know thumb stud and wave opener and anyway knife nuts know what I'm talking about how much fun is your knife to actually flip around and play with does it really kill your finger after a while does it you know anyway so these would be my five okay this could be interchanged this could be interchanged. Whoa, a Strider and then interchange it with a Kaiser? Are you nuts? Yeah, go buy this knife. Okay, hold it in your hands. All right, and then make the decision. Don't judge something you don't know anything about until you have it in your hands and you've played with it yourself. This is, I love this knife. I love this blade grind, um, you know. Tanto recurve, just, I mean, this isn't easy, you know? It's not just something that you can just throw together in a heartbeat. I mean, this is, you know, it takes, it takes great design in. It takes, you know, great execution. And just the material and the patterns um, on these Kaisers. I know, I know, I know. You got all these great knives here. Stop talking about that shitty Chinese knife. Spec operator. All right. 
That's it. I know I ramble. I tend to do so. Knives are in front of me. All right. Loving this knife. The more I play with it, I'm really excited about the Vox Viper Kayomi. It's pretty much this knife, but a flipper. All right. A few differences. Blue pocket clip. Ugly blue pocket clip, like a paddle. I like this one. Um, it's got a blue uh, backspacer here. Like I said, this should have, you know, this should have it anodized blue like the carbon fiber. Uh, I think the hardware should be anodized blue. That would look really cool. But anyway, the Kayomi. Okay, keep an eye out. This but a flipper pretty much. All right, and also the F6 Vox. Looks real nice. Looks like a ZT0452 kind of with the long, long style on that. Anyway, all right. God bless. <laughs> rambling, rambling.